Yo, what's going on, everybody? It's your boys back with, hopefully, uh, a weekly thing. I remember when we did that thing with a Luigi's Mansion, like, last year. <laughs> we were like, we're going to do this every week. What if we made it, like, an annual podcast? Yeah. <laughs> One episode a year. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> welcome like back. <laughs> welcome back to whatever this is. I don't know. I have no podcasts. I, I'm like podcasting is definitely not something that comes easily to me let me tell you it's uh you know what i'll give you like a recommendation list because there's there's, like a bunch of good ones out there and like basically you need to get a advertisement of this fucking sponsorship from casper uh mattress place and then your podcast (laughs) like we'll have like we'll have a true crime podcast and then uh but we'll just replace all the crime with video games True uh, video game crimes. Yeah. All right. Well, this is uh kind of like your weekly news roundup. Uh, so let's see, Phil. What happened this week? Some big stuff hit the fan. The PS5 reveal. We reacted to the whole thing. You and I did. <laughs> um, yeah, we did. Some uh, some real reactions there. Uh, Walk me through it because it's real, real, <laughs> genuine reactions. You know. Okay. So has your opinion at all changed on the design of the PlayStation Five? Because I'm watching. The- <laughs> you know, my coworker said it looks like a hotel in Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually. I'm watching the reveal trailer again, and I, it's kind of grown on me. Oh, okay. First off, the one thing I've learned about this console, it is fucking enormous. Like it is actually. Let me see if I can find a size comparison. Bigger than like the Xbox, like the uh, one. Hold on, PS5 size comparison. Uh, let me see. There was an image that very okay, yeah. So some guy like he took at the look at the he like he measured the disc drive right because that's a piece of a console that is obviously universally the same size, and then yeah, he okay. used that he used it to compare it with other consoles. So let me uh, actually, what am I doing? Let me open this image in a new tab. I don't know how the computer. Okay, so let me stream my thing to you on Discord so you can see what I'm talking about. Yes, uh, and I'll describe it for the radio. They can see it here, but I want you to see it here. Oh, I can't. Can I share a window your instead desktop. of just a... Hold on, you wait. Have, uh, wait, hold on, hold on. Share screen. I want to share just a window, not a... There we go. Application window. My B. Share. There we go. So, it's gigantic. Yeah, it's huge. fucking huge. So, that's the Xbox uh, Series X. The Xbox is a new console right next to it. So it's it's wider, but it's shorter. And then that, <laughs> it's funny because I have an Xbox One and that thing, I really like the Xbox One because it's kind of like a hefty piece of, like a hefty square. It just like feels good to hold. But that thing is like one fourth the size of the Series X. And then you look at the PlayStation <laughs> 5 and it's like, what the fuck is that thing? Um, it's gigantic. It's now, can huge. You, I see it on a base. Can you lay that down flat? Yes, or yes, you can lay it down. Actually, I think there's images on Sifted here. Let me see if I can, uh, hold on. Uh, yeah, this is what it looks like laying down on the side. Now, uh, uh, I think it looks stupid. What, so it's interesting because one, like you, you can see the design right here. Um, mm. There, so there's the two skews. There's the discless one and the not discless one. <laughs> um, yes, it's it's almost discless. like you could tell that the design was made without the disc in mind because when you put the disc drive on there, it just looks like it has a tumor. It's yeah, just like it, it does it, kind of look like an afterthought. Yeah, it just like awkwardly hangs off on the bottom right corner there. It's kind of like I, I would have put it in the middle somewhere, maybe. Yeah, I don't know if. Uh... Yeah, see, that's what it looks like. Oh no, I don't want to switch to fucking save money. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, how big is the PlayStation Five? Fans are trying to speculate that says Polygon. So that's what it looks like on side. Oh that's wait, kinda... are they, is there RGB lights in there too? Uh oh. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that. Is you know, like that's an interesting thing because that's those towers. Because that's what the PS4 controller did. It had those little lights on the on the back of the controller that would like light up different things if the programmers decided that's something they wanted to use. That's um, cool. Sure. But that yeah. that also existed for the purpose of PlayStation VR because it, those lights acted as like a tracking signal for the camera. Oh, okay. So are I think there's actually you working. Are they gonna like? Is PlayStation VR still a thing? Is PlayStation what? VR. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Like so they're going to support it. They just didn't show anything. They didn't. They left some stuff 
for like later. Obviously, they didn't they didn't mm-hmm. let the whole goose out. I don't know if that's even an expression, but <laughs> that's an expression. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they didn't let the whole goose out. I don't know what you mean. Uh, so yeah, they definitely um they're leaving some stuff uh to to reveal later. So PlayStation VR has been. You know what? I can use Sifted to find out. Let's see. Uh, God, I love how I'm also making this like an advertisement for Sifted. Let's see. PSVR. <laughs> Let's see what comes up. Uh, do, 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 do. Podcast also brought to you by Casper Mattresses. I want to see if I can find a story. Uh, and you have to say stuff like, "Oh, I just got this mattress, <laughs> and uh, no joke, it 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 changed my life." Hmm. And then uh, let's see xylophone music in the background. See, Sony's next PSVR release could be wireless, according to recent patent. So yeah, so Sony's been patenting some shit uh, okay. with VR rec- in the recent times uh mm-hmm. recent and time. wireless seems like the you know i i don't know about wireless because wireless is going to reduce or introduce latency and the thing about like vr is that any like noticeable bound bount of latency is going to just completely make you want to vomit it's just like yeah it doesn't yeah I get, I get what you're saying but the um, wires attached to the fucking vr set i think is i don't think you can they're they're not that bad to manage. If you get them out of the way, you, you'll be okay. But I guess. So VR, PS- have, you played, uh, have you played Half Life Alex yet? No. It says. Uh, in fact, there's a story right here. Valve won't rule out PSVR for Half Life Alex. Um, it's but it's not on there now. Uh, so uh, I can't. Uh-huh. Oh, you can't. Right now I can only use the index. Yeah, that's. Can't you like unlock your headset or something? You can like do some hacks to get it to work on PC, but I think it's very janky, and I'm not really interested in doing that right now. <laughs> I don't think it's. So, did you order the Valve Index yet? Or are you gonna order no, it? Later? I'm gonna wait. I think I'll, I might get it. I'm. I'm thinking I'm gonna wait till like Black Friday and see if they have any kind of like small discount, so I can feel slightly less okay. awful. Um, okay. Yeah, it's been at nine ninety nine for a while now. There's really no uh, price drop. I mean, yeah, it did come out. How old is that now? It's pretty. Um, uh the PSVR or the Valve Index. It's uh which who's it's uh it came out in mid 2019 you know what they always discount shit like within mm. six months like <laughs> you know nine nine fifty and that's maybe putting it into the ballpark of me spending that much on a on a vr headset right 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 <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna take out a, a loan or are you gonna pay for it no no I'll, no i'll be fine don't worry about me <laughs> I got all that YouTube money from those reaction videos. Uh, so okay, wow. so that PS that PS five launch or that PS five reveal event, word on the interwebs, pretty you know pretty solid, nothing uh nothing too spectacular. But uh, mm-hmm. I mean, what did they revealed they revealed they revealed some good games. They had Ratchet and Clank. Walk me through it. Walk. Do you have like a list of the shit they revealed? Uh, I can. You know, I I'm just gonna go off in my dog. head. So. The, it started the show with revealing Spider-Man, the next Spider-Man game. But here's the catch, okay? No, it started off with fucking Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh yeah, you're right. It did start off with that. So, <laughs> but after that, they showed, uh, they announced that the next Spider-Man oh, game. You don't want to. You don't want to. No, con- not con- bleh, no contributions to that fucking Grand That's Theft Auto. That's already a five, given, dude. Grand Theft Auto Five. <laughs> That's oh. crazy. I um. God, Jesus Christ. Uh. I started. Uh, Jesus, I just totally lost my train of thought now with Grand Theft Auto V. But yeah, so so launch title Spider Man. That was the next thing that was revealed. Uh, but here's the catch, though. So it, it's actually kind of funny. So Spider Man, Marvel Spider Man, for PS4 mm-hmm. came out on 2018. I think or like midway through 2018. So it's only been like two years. So the fact sure. that they like made a sequel seemed pretty. Uh, uh, um, implausible and when you received more information about what this actually is it's kind of coming to light so it's really more of like an expansion um, because it uses the same city like it uses the city and all the assets within the city they're just like upgraded for PlayStation 5 hardware and I'm, there's going to be a new story featuring uh, featuring Miles who was in the first game um, so it kind of looks like a ho- it, it looks like a quick and dirty thing that they put together just to have something at launch. That's like what would I when I started learning more stuff about that, I was like, that's I don't know if I hope they don't charge me 60 bucks for that if it's just an expand alone. But it's like, I, I don't know. So it's it's kind of like the 
how much of the same city is it though? Because there's it's games the same, that it's like the same city. It's all of it's Manhattan. It's well, it's yeah, it's Manhattan. It's just like the island yeah, of Manhattan. I mean, what, I mean, what are they going to update Manhattan? <laughs> are they gonna yeah, but I don't know. They might like, were, like obviously for the sequel, they're going to expand to like Queens and Brooklyn, but like with Manhattan, cool. they're just. Yeah, I mean, that, but that's like the sequel sequel. Like when this was first announced, people thought that this was the sequel, but it's not. It's like an expansion. It's like a side story that they're just introducing okay. to give PlayStation 5 something at launch. Uh, okay. They also announced the new Ratchet and Clank game, which looks pretty cool. You think, and that's you think actually we're going to expand like Staten Island to Spider Man. Like, how far do you think their reaches? Oh, I think go? they'll. I think they'll just add to it. Yeah. <laughs> That would actually, that would be pretty funny to like play Spider Man, but with no buildings to like swing off of. You're in Staten Island, and it's just like a bunch of residential houses. Yeah, the Ratchet and Clank game. I'm watch, watching the trailer right here. Is pretty. Uh, that's another thing that this doesn't have a release date yet. The Ratchet and Clank game, so I'm not sure, you know, what's going on with that. But I think the most exciting thing about almost all of these games that were revealed is that because they're PlayStation 5 exclusives, they're going to be able to just utilize the hardware in ways that wasn't possible on PlayStation 4. Um, do you so remember the last time... Was... Go on, last go ahead. Time, go ahead. No, no, I insist. You go first. <laughs> I, do you remember the last time you've played a game and you were like, wow, like yes. this is next gen? Like like a, like a you got like a new console from like the new generation and then you played a game and you're like, wow, like I'm playing a game that was not possible before this console <laughs> i felt i kind of felt that way when i was looking at the ray tracing and control really yeah because like i dude, guess like a lot of that shit like you you would like pause and look at the lighting of certain did you do like on and off stuff with control to like, compare it yeah and i will say that it, it is kind of i don't want to say like ray tracing but the lighting still looks good with ray tracing off Mm-hmm. But you just look at like certain surfaces, and like I'll just forget that about ray tracing, like when I'm playing it. But I'll just like look at certain things and just be like, "Wow, that looks that looks really good." Is it on by default when you like start a game? Because you have an RTX 2070, right? No, I had to mess with it. I actually had to lower the quality of the game in general. I think I yeah. ran it with like medium graphics quality. And did you did tracing. you try using that the uh, DLSS that video that I showed you from Direct Found uh, Digital Foundry? Like uh, we, we're talking about DLSS. DLSS. No, I, se- I, I sent you that I, digital foundry video. It was basically it's a method of getting more frames out of uh, like a high fidelity. Oh yeah, thing. yeah, I remember what you're talking about. It was it was like that thing yeah, where they like, basically oh, have weird. the game. It basically the way it works is that they render the game at a lower base resolution, like a l- lower internal resolution, and then upscale it like in real time uh, to make it look like it's not at a lower resolution. And yeah. in effect, what that does is that allows your graphics card to it takes the it takes the load off your graphics card because it's rendering internally at a lower resolution. So that way you can pump mm-hmm. out more frames. But the actual image quality is still comparable to a native resolution at what it would normally be because the upscaling is taking care of that. So I don't know if you messed around with that. I know that's in control. In fact, I think control is the game that was featured when they were uh yeah, they yeah, were messing yeah. around with that. In that video, that you I actually check it out. I wonder if I can actually because I just took a hard drive out of here that might affect control on it. Mm-hmm. Let me see. I'm gonna look into it. Uh, but, okay. Um, also, uh, fucking, you know what else did it for me was, and I know this has been in a lot of games, but I think a game that I really shined in was Resident Evil Two, the remake. Uh, mm-hmm. like the the facial capturing for that game. Yeah. Like. <laughs> that that was kind of, I guess you, you first kind of saw that in L.A. Noir, so yeah. Let, let's say like L.A. Noir. Mm-hmm. It, it's just like faces were always really hard to get in video games, and once they brought in like facial capture, it was like, oh wow, look at that. He's like, <laughs> yes, yeah, wiggling his nose. He's wiggling his nose. <laughs> I remember. I I think the first time I ever felt that way was when I played Dead Rising for the first time, because I was like with all those zombies on screen on the Xbox 360. I was like, whoa, that no way. Like that's, <laughs> this, like I can't believe like this game can render this many people all at once. <laughs> it, that's crazy. So much, so much RAM. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm getting at is, um, so that like the trailer for Ratchet and Clank features this like time warping stuff where he just jumps yeah, through a just bunch of wormholes. Yeah, switching between levels really quickly because they're like, yeah. look how fast we can load levels. Yeah, exactly. So that's yeah. You have? Do you have an SSD in your build on your computer? Of course. Because I'm starting to think, because honestly, the other kicker is uh, the RE8 trailer, RE Village, as they call it. Um, 
So honestly, when I saw this trailer, I thought this was the best trailer in the entire show, um, personally. And it's definitely the game that I'm most excited about. Do you think the you're thing biased because you are in love with Resident <laughs> Evil. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm in completely unbiased <laughs> opinion, Phil. I don't know what you're talking about. So, um, uh, the thing that excited me the most. So I already read the the, the leaks that came out in April. So I kind of expected this to come. Um, but the thing that excited me the most. Uh, that I was that I basically learned watching this trailer is that this is going to be a next gen exclusive. Like this game is not going to be available on PS4 or Xbox One. So the developers, Capcom, doesn't have to worry about making this game run on an Xbox One and a PS4. Because oh, because cool. I don't know if you noticed, but like a lot of people complained of like the graphical downgrade in Resident Evil Three because uh, zombies no longer ragdolled when they died. Uh, and they also like they no longer fell apart. I don't know if you, I don't know if like you ever took notice. I guess this is a good question. But did you ever notice like an RE2 when you shot zombies? Like if you shot his arm, remake, like his arm would fall about? off. Yeah, RE2 yeah. remake. Like they would like yeah. they would decompose as you shot them, which was like the sure. coolest touch. Yeah, like yeah, none of that like stuff their happens. Knees would, like blow off. Yeah, like their their limbs would come off or like their. Uh... That doesn't happen in Resident Evil Three. No, it doesn't. They're just they uh, get like they get like splats of blood on there on their character models and then they fall over and like fixed uh fixed animations. And the reason oh. that happens is because since most of that game takes place outside, um obviously that takes more processing power because if okay. you're in an open environment, yeah, you're yeah, rendering more of a world. Textures. Yeah, so they have to make compromises in some aspects of the game in order to get that game to run at an acceptable level on a base Xbox 1. So oh, Okay, okay. Because because RE2 remake almost takes place like almost exclusively like ninety five percent of that game is indoors, so a lot of the uh, uh, it's not as graphically demanding as RE3 is in terms of like its scope, which is why I they could pull that off. Do actually ran a little bit better on my computer too. Now that I think about it, yeah, yeah, but <clears throat> but that's why I'm excited about RE8 being on freaking next gen only because now they're not going to have that limitation in place and you know it's crazy looking at this trailer again uh i was watching a lot of people's like reactions to this trailer um <laughs> you know to get to get tips on how to react to compare your own reaction <laughs> um i know how to have a soul <laughs> everybody said react. uh every, a lot of people said oh this gives them like re4 vibes because it's got a village and like castle and i'm like yeah i probably should because RE4 Remake is the game that's scheduled to come out after this. And from a developer standpoint, Has this is a great... Has for Remake? That is, that is the... That is the um, that's the rumor. It's basically all but confirmed. I mean, the if I look up... That confirmed? What? <laughs> Resident Evil 4 is slated for 2022, and Shinji Mikami has the original... The creator of Resident Evil and the director of... Uh, of uh, b- 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 of Resident Evil Four, he already gave his like yeah, uh, want, his blessing. Right? Yeah, see if you're. I don't know if you're watching the screen, but it's like yeah, rumor. Uh, yeah, so like uh, this was on April twelfth. Resident Evil Four remake is reportedly in development at, at Capcom. Uh, God, this worried me so much, but that's another story. Um, <laughs> but basically, like RE Eight looks so similar in vibe to RE Four. I think that's obviously this cre- gives more credence to this rumor. Because from a d- game's development standpoint, you can make a bunch of assets for RE8 and then recycle them for RE4 since they're so similar. Yeah, in sure. appearance. So you yeah. can make like you can retexture a lot of stuff for, for the same game her. and cut down on your uh, cut down on your development costs. Yeah, mm. yeah. Why not? So that's pretty dope. Um, I guess let's let's go over that. Uh. You know, it was really interesting when I first watched that trailer, or when I first read the rumors of RE8, uh, it basically gave away that it was first person, I think I can actually look it up, uh, when the rumors first leaked. Uh, yeah, see, this is back in April. Report, Resident Evil is first person, takes serious departures, and will be uh, out next year. So, when I first read these uh, <clears throat> these rumors, like the thing that disappointed me was that it was going back to first person because I actually really well, preferred. I, I really preferred the third person from the remakes. You I just thought that was seven, though. Yeah, but like I, I, the, I don't know. I, like the, the thing is like play seven, play seven, and then get back to me. 
I played a little bit of seven, like some of the no, DLCs. Play all of it. <laughs> play it now. Put that VR headset on right now. Yo, that is a reaction. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> no, I'm not playing that game in VR. <laughs> um Dude, if you live stream that, it'll be like uh, you know. If I we'll survive that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you should. Um, <laughs> I just really like that game. That's why I'm advocating for it. Yeah, but like, I the thing is, when I was watching that trailer, I didn't even realize. Like, it, like it didn't even click in my head that that was something that it disappointed me at first because I was just like, well, when I saw that, tra- in, in that trailer, though. they did show a brief snippet uh, in like a developer doc. Actually, I wonder if I can find that. Uh, let, me search, let me just search for Resident Evil. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Oh, check it out. Resident Evil series ships 100 million. So it's Capcom's wow. first series to, to sell 100 million copies. Let's see. There's a brief yeah, walkthrough. Yeah. Let's see. This is, uh, Tsuyoshi Kanda. Yeah. Check out this game, bro. I don't know. It probably looks like shit on your screen, but no, no, no. yeah, hold I, on, can see it. I, I can see see it. I want to see them do the walkthrough. There we go. Hold on. There he goes. He's walking in. Yeah, dude, this is just like seven, which was really cool. Yeah, because it's this it's looks- still got like the Resident Evil vibes, where like you're going, it's like a Resident. Oh, Evil check it out! Game. They even uh they changed the inventory system too, so it's actually more reminiscent of RE4. So now you have like the attaché case. Remember in Resident Evil Four how you could yeah. Um, so this seems like you know because I heard a lot of people come. I hear like I don't know. It's kind of give take. Like purists obviously like the original inventory system where it's like one item per one slot. But this seems more like a best of both worlds, because uh, it like wait, it, it pe- wait, what didn't didn't every single Resident Evil have an inventory system like this on Lost? No, okay, so uh, Resident Evil one through three had like one item per slot. So like you had like mm. your character had like eight slots, right? And this no matter remake, how, this is before this is before Resident Evil four. Resident Evil four changed this. Uh so but Resident Evil two and three remake had inventory systems like this. No, they didn't. This is Resident Evil 4's inventory system. This is di- this is what I'm trying to. Okay, I, I, I think okay, you're missing. Okay. No, no, go okay. through it. I, I cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I think you're missing this. So RE yeah. one and th- uh, to three, like you played as a character and you had like eight slots, right? Like you only had eight empty spaces, and no matter yeah. what item you picked up, it would take up one slot. Sometimes you'd get an item that would take take two slots, right? Yeah, but that's what I'm nothing, at. You're lying. Nothing it's would not get true. bigger. Awesome. Nothing would get bigger than that. Yeah. In RE in no, RE4 no, the shotgun was like three slots. The shotgun, well whatever. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> no, <it's the> <laughs> you thing, had dude. you had very little inventory space. You basically had like 10, you had single digit slots. Yeah, yeah in yeah. RE so in RE4, four, you had an yeah. attaché case and then because you had way more space, the items could more accurately reflect how much space they would take up relative to other items. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the inventory system they're going with that going with RE in in the with in RE8. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a fucking Diablo inventory. Yeah. They've also said that RE8 is going to lean more heavy in action than RE7 did. So I don't know, you played RE7 uh is that like uh you know, I, I know like they have like the molded enemy that that's kinda like copied and pasted throughout the game, but like I don't know, is it like is it like boring from a from a freaking like no, combat perspective? I, no no no. It it was they were definitely like I wouldn't call it boring, but I would say it's a little bit more like Resident Evil two and not like Resident Evil Four, where you know, yeah. Resident Evil Four is like a lot of combat. Resident Evil Four is a, just a, Resident Evil Four is a straight up action game. I mean, yeah, that's... so I feel like that's what they're trying to do here, but with the same like it's like Resident Evil Seven mixed with Resident Evil Four. Yeah, that's so, the vibe I'm getting right here. You cool, cool with werewolves in Resident Evil? No, no, that's the one thing that absolutely. <laughs> <period. laughs> You're gonna boycott Resident Evil Eight now. <laughs> um, yeah, I will never play this goddamn game. <laughs> uh, so you're playing as Ethan again? That's interesting that they brought Ethan back. Um, <laughs> Ethan. <laughs> uh Ethan apparently everybody tells me he has no personality. No, he's I like love the only Ethan. 
<laughs> he's so relatable. Like every time some shit happens, like remember when you're like Chris Redfield and you're like, I have to investigate this green goop, but Ethan's uh-huh. always just like, fuck this. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's like, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, when from the clips I've seen, he always seemed like the <laughs> he he plays like the straight man in like Resident Evil. Yeah, so he is he is like the white cis man. <laughs> <laughs> Which is uh, great, because that's such an underrepresented category in video games, yeah. you know. Uh, yo, what's up, Blaze Wolf? We're talking about video games, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Evil Chris Redfield. I think I talked about this in our reaction. They they definitely changed Chris models, uh, Chris's face model to more accurately yeah, yeah, reflect how buff he should be. I was like, yeah. who's this guy? <laughs> who's this guy? <laughs> Man, what, what a character development. Yeah, what an, what an so I'm guessing this takes place... This takes place apparently two two years after seven. Okay, so they're all chronological, like one and then two and then three and then. Uh, yes, yeah, the number of games are chronological. Yes, in fact, actually, yeah, zero even takes place before one. So yeah, that's exactly true. Uh, Like revelations. Revelations Revelations takes place in between the games. So like revelations one takes place between four and five, and then you call it four point five. (laughs) <laughs> Revelations 2 5. takes place before um, 5 and 6. And this is interesting because apparently this game started development as Re- uh, Revelations 3. Because Revelations is kind of the spin off series that tries a couple things that are more like. Uh, like Revelations was the spin off series back when 6 came out. Like the year 6 came out, Revelations 1 also came out. And six mm-hmm. was like this super ridiculous action game that we, I mean, obviously we've been playing. And Revelations was the more like slow paced, kind of more like classic Resident Evil experience. Yeah, um, there's still a lot of exploration in in uh, Revelations. Yeah, no, that's you know, that's. A lot, a lot of that bad. Yeah, so it's like that was more like that was more like classic like RE formula, um, and that's kind of like the spin off series that they 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 made to appease fans that really wanted to return to that. And now they're just kind of blending them both together. So it's, um, I mean, I'm super excited for this game. I mean, just, it looks great. It's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, I'm pretty this is, too. if I got the index, would you play this in VR? <laughs> oh, no. question is that. <laughs> uh, cause I, w- I, w- <laughs> I want to play a seven on the, in index. VR. Do you think you yeah. could handle this game in VR? Like, legitimately? Yeah, dude. I don't yeah. know, I dude. Will it's out the same person. <laughs> dude, I when I played 7 in VR for, like, that brief moment, I, like, I, I got so scared I almost cried. <laughs> that shit was... It was... It's horrifying, <laughs> dude. <laughs> oh, man. Can you play Blizz- 7? Like, right now? <laughs> yeah, you maybe I'll... S- yeah, maybe I'll. I don't know. I'm, it's scary, dude. Can you can you give me a list of all the jump scares and then like? Uh... <laughs> yeah, you know if you if you like stream it right now, I'll like give you a heads up if there's a jump scare if I remember <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Well, anyway, Resident Evil Seven uh, or Resident Evil Eight looks like a big departure. You know, it's cool because it's funny because um, the original report said it was gonna piss fans off because it was such a departure. But this did not piss me off, and I don't think it pissed anybody off. It looked pretty dope. It, that's fine. Uh, Resident Evil allowed for allowed departures, you know. I yeah, feel Resident like every, Evil like, third game or something is a completely new concept. Yeah, you know? Resident. That's one thing I love about the series is that they they reinvent themselves so many times, and sometimes for better or worse. But it's like, God, like this playing the series is very weird because some of so many of the games are just so different from each other. Um. So, what else? Talked about the design. Uh, some other big it's things. PS5 list. What else came out on PS5? So, uh, the things, the biggest things of note. Know the biggest things of note. Uh, well, first off, yeah. Um, the other thing of note was the Demon Souls trailer, and I don't know you never played Demon Souls. Um, but this one, Demon Souls, <laughs> Demon Souls remastered. Yeah. So I told oh, you I about this. I didn't know it was Demon's Soul. Yeah, it's the soul of Demons. Oh. Yeah, Demons' wow. soul. Demons' <laughs> possessive soul. I'm <laughs> the soul of the demon. Wow. I'm really 
I'm looking forward to this because I, I I told you during the reaction, like I, I had played, so I played Dark Souls 1 first, then 2, then 3, and then I never played Demon Souls because I didn't have a PS3. Um, I eventually got a PS3 at some point in the future and then I, I still didn't play it. But then I decided to play it for the first time when they announced the servers were going to go offline. It looks uh, really good. So I played it the last week the servers were online and uh, which was dope because a lot of people were online to like, I don't know, celebrate the last moments of Demon Souls. Yeah. Uh, so I got like, I got like the, basically the authentic Demon Souls experience at that, at that point. Uh, the things that really having had played all the other Dark Souls games before coming back to Demon Souls, the thing that surprised me the most was one, like how much of a rough draft <laughs> it felt like of Dark Souls one. Like the only reason Dark Souls One exists and it isn't called Demon Souls Two is because the creators wanted the next game to be multi-platform, but D- Demon Souls was owned. The IP was owned by Sony, so they wouldn't let them. So they just made the same game and then called it something different. Um, but the thing that's like interesting about this game, this game, since it was like the first Souls game. It did some weird experimental shit that is like really funny <laughs> having it played the other Dark Souls games, but like that I'm actually really interested to see how they're gonna remake in this because some of them are really cool and interesting. Yeah, and I'm actually I'm actually really surprised they didn't make them in the Souls game. Um, but some of the ideas are so dumb. Like every every boss in this game has like a unique gimmick to it. Uh there's one boss. There's one boss that's really cool. It's basically and I'm surprised they didn't bring this back in the Dark Souls games, but he's basically, con- he can be controlled by a real player. So you know how like players can invade your game and like they'll sh- typically show up as like a shadow or something and try to kill you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. In this, this one boss, I think it was the old monk, he's literally controlled by a human being. So that's like the gimmick of him. Is that his? Well, what if you get someone that sucks, and then you have like a really yeah. Exa- that's boss. actually exactly is so funny because when I played him, I got a human being, and then what the guy did, he like bowed in front of me, and then he turned around and just let me backstab him. <laughs> <laughs> he just he just let me kill him. So it's like the boss battle starts, and the guy just gives up instantly. <laughs> so uh, I'm surprised they never did that in a Souls game. Uh, I I think there's like we'll an MP. That river. What's that? The river. It's like eight seconds in or something like that. Uh, I'll, I'll start from the beginning again. It's very pretty. Um, there was uh, there's a boss that can't hear, so <laughs> you had to spend the whole like map like just tiptoeing around him. There's one that's like um, oh, there's one boss that has this fucking stupid move that <laughs> that river. He's like that river. That river. Yeah, that's great. That, that's there's a this nice river. There's one boss at the end of the game that uh. Uh, there's one boss between there's one boss at the end of the game that has a move that drains your level. So like he'll grab you and it'll be like slow. He'll he'll de level you, which is the weird. It's the dumbest thing ever. The first time I played it, uh, he kept grabbing me and like I I died to him. Oh, like I like I basically died to him and I tried to like fight him again and he was even harder. I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I checked my stats and I was like 11 levels lower. Because he oh had hit God. me so many times with that move that he completely de leveled me. <laughs> he just had to go grind. Like that's like that's <laughs> an example of a boss that's like total bullshit. Like that's a like hilarious idea, but please never do that again. Um, that reminds me of like the I think this guy right ball. here. Uh, where was he? Uh, this guy right here, the Tower Knight. This yeah. is like the most iconic, or one of mm-hmm. the most iconic bosses in the game. Uh, this dude, this dude is pretty fun. It was basically, it's pretty simplistic. You go after his legs and he falls down and they hit his head. But there's like a bunch of <laughs> archers throughout the whole arena that try to kill you. God, there's I a bunch of crazy Dark ones. Yeah. I want to get back in. I really, really want to like Dark Souls. Why don't you like Dark Souls? Why do you like, you like Sekiro, but you don't like Dark Souls, right? Dude, the combat is so different. What's different about it? Um, The fucking uh, counter and like that. You haven't even played Sekiro. I know, that's what I'm asking. Oh, okay. <laughs> you are agreeing that it was similar. Um, the, the combat is more like uh, counters. Instead of dodging, your main defense is like countering. Mm. Oh my god, so you like, know what? What? So, you actually sound like you would be like huge into Bloodborne. Because um, when Dark Souls 1 was completed, uh, the director of Dark Souls, uh, he went on, he went back to Sony to make create another game for them. 
Um, but he didn't make Demon Souls. He made Bloodborne uh, while the original From Software team was making Dark Souls 2. But Bloodborne is literally like... Uh, Bloodborne is a Souls game. It's a Dark Souls game. But it's uh, it takes place in like London in like the 1800s or like the 1600s or whatever. Um, Let me see gameplay. Had, Let me see. Bring up a video. Let's see. Uh, uh, Bloodborne. This is a PS4 exclusive. There are rumors. Yeah, Bloodborne remastered rumors gain traction, uh, but don't match Bluepoint's previous record. There's rumors that uh, it's Wait, coming to PC. PS4 game? Yeah, it's, it was a PS4 exclusive, but there were rumors that they were going to port it to PC. It? Uh, apparently. I mean, Blueport's already, Bluepoint, the developers already. Uh, remastering demon souls so i think that might What's be that might be the time between a release and a remaster let me see if i can oh here i can watch uh here so this is this is this is bloodborne so the thing about this game uh that separates it from the other souls games is that you have no shield you can only sidestep or counter attack so you see like he has a gun on his left hand Mm -hmm. The gun is how you counter. If you shoot somebody at a specific time while they're attacking, you'll like stagger them and then you can do like a, like a repost, like a parry uh, attack that does like massive damage. Um, Then also though, yeah, you're let me get rid of this ad. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and uh, the th- the other thing about this game is that it was like, it was way more aggressive. Like dark souls, you can be very defensive. Um, because uh, you can just have your shield up and then just tank attacks. Since this game, you don't have a shield. You have to either sidestep or uh, if you like take damage, you can regain your health by hitting enemies. So oh, I don't think there's okay. Yeah, so that's like, actually that happens in Sekiro too. I think. Like, yeah, like if you, if you damage someone's posture, that also regains your posture. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like that. It's like that's when you get like- hit. When, it, when you get hit, your health doesn't go away. A portion of it turns, like, orange, and then it will, like, mm-hmm. slowly drain away. But, like, if you're hitting somebody while it's draining, it will recover, uh, like, a, like, a certain percentage of it every hit. So, basically, mm-hmm. it's it was Dark Souls, but way more, like, a, offensive-based. And I never played it. I probably should, but... uh, This combat still looks very Dark Souls-y. Like, like I don't want to say, like, janky is the word, but it's very... uh. I don't know. It's very like it is very. It's kind of slower. I think. Yeah, maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, it like can you roll in Sekiro? Um, I want to say yes. Actually, you might like jump or something. Yeah, you you kind of have like dodging ability, but like yeah. Um, like, you don't do that. The way to do it is like uh counters. Yeah. Like, so like. Win yeah, because this game is like all about dodging, uh, for the most part, but. Mm-hmm. So are the Dark Souls, aren't they? Like, there's a lot of yeah. parrying. I mean, you can parry if you have the correct shield. You can, you have to make a build for it, though. Not parrying, so. sorry, like dodge rolling. Yeah, I was gonna but then the like, beat. there's there's plenty of systems in place to do that. But um, I mean, yeah, this is <laughs> if this ever gets ported to PC, you should probably try this game because you might actually like this more. You'll definitely yeah, like it more than Dark Souls. This, this combat definitely looks a lot. Yeah, see, this, this is this is way more. Yeah, see, this is a greater yeah, example of cool. like cool. what's going on here, because you see, he, he can't dodge or anything, so it's all just it's, yeah. It's, yeah, see, so there was he just did the counter attack with the gun, and then he did, got the repost on him. Okay, this is kind of like Sekiro. Yeah, this when is kind of like. Sekiro? What'd you say? I said, when are you gonna play Sekiro? I don't know. It's definitely on my to do list. Yeah. Th- the thing that scares me about Sekiro is that since you can't like, there's no like level up system in the game. Kind I of. Have to, like the thing with every Dark Souls game is like I would get to a certain level, and then I'd be like, "Huh, like uh, I'm gonna go to a next area. I wonder if I'm strong enough level. I'm gonna look up what the recommended level is for for this area before I go uh, forward." Okay. And then I look it up, and I'll be like twenty levels higher than <laughs> the recommended level. <laughs> so. That's the thing I liked about the Souls games is that you could kind of make them as easy as you wanted them to be if you just grinded a little bit, because uh, it, it just yeah, had that RPG really element in it. Sekiro doesn't really have that to the same extent, no. so the difficulty is kind of fixed in that regard, which I don't know, kind of scares me a little bit more than a regular Souls game. Uh, but yeah, 
Yeah, anyway. the combat is kind of something more you have to like learn, you know, which mm-hmm. I like that about that. It's like one of those things where it's like there's no way you're going to beat a boss on the first time and then mm-hmm. after like a few times you learn his moves and you like, you know, do what right. you're supposed to do. And it's just really <laughs> fun the way they made it. Man. Yeah, but Demon yeah, Souls I'm going to give it back and be right back. All right, I'm going to start to the next segment. So Demon Souls PlayStation 4 exclusive excited for that. Uh god, what else did they showed that was Pretty dope. Nothing too crazy. I mean, Ghostwire Tokyo looked pretty cool, but I don't really know enough about it to uh, to do anything. What I want to get up, though, is that Surgeon Simulator gameplay, because that's... I also don't know how to spell Surgeon. Uh, let's see. Simulator. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, this is... Uh... <laughs> All right, <laughs> this is gonna be great when this comes out. Oh my god, what's going on, Blaze Wolf? I have absolutely zero idea what you guys are talking about. Me too, dude. Ooh. This is going way over twenty minutes, but uh, I don't know what else do we have left. Uh, certain simulator persona. Yeah, all right. We'll we'll wrap this up in a couple minutes. I guess I'll just go over some notable PC stuff, and then we'll kind of dip. I don't know. We're learning the flow of it as we go along, so. Any suggestions or anything, I'm totally open to it. Because, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll just upload weekly and then hope somebody, uh, someone catches on and wants to watch. But otherwise. All right. So. <clears throat> all right, Philip. So next up. Is there a ranked mode? In what? Certain simulator. No, but this was just <laughs> this was just announced a couple days ago. So this is Surgeon Simulator 2. Check, check this out. Multiplayer Surgeon Simulator. So uh <laughs> So you can see that they they basically like expanded it to be an entire environment. That that was that's what makes me most excited about this game is this this seems like a real sequel as compa- I, the other original game was really simplistic, but like the way they're expanding this looks really fun. <laughs> okay, uh, I can see that. I, I uh, get it. Yeah, so it's just like a whole open world, like kind of sandbox environment that you just mess around in. Uh, I'm assuming this will have VR support, and it really should. Uh, this is silly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't think we're gonna? We are 100. Do you not want to play this <laughs> when no, this comes out? Really no, I'll play it. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Like oh, a- wait a minute. Hold on. What is that? Wait a minute. Do you build the operation room? Oh. Yeah, that looks fun. So I think like I mean, one of the play. things they said about this game is that you're gonna like there's gonna be prepping involved to have you to 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 have you better increase your chances of surviving or succeeding in the surgery. Uh, <laughs> uh, so you can <laughs> you can prep however you want. Um, so they're expanding the game that way, and then they're gonna have some like light puzzle elements that are spread out throughout the the hospital. Wow. Uh, so it looks like they're gamifying this a lot. So I'm really excited for this one. This is probably the, besides the Persona 4 reveal, this is the other thing that, that really got me at the PC uh, <laughs> award show. So this August, like oh, whoa, August, though. August, 20, August, 2020. <laughs> I wonder how is much it's going to cost. Cool? Yeah, this August. That's in is two months. Oh, I don't know. Let's see. It'll say, uh, oh, yeah. Epic Game Store exclusive. Yep. That that epic that dude that uh, that twelve percent cut on the Epic Game Store is just too much for these indie devs to pass up. Yeah. Uh, How do you feel about that? I don't care. Do you feel strongly <laughs> about that? I, don't nah, nah, nah. I I used to, but then I remembered that I just feel strongly about Steam because I've been on it for like a decade. So yeah. <laughs> it's like I I why do I need more than one game launcher? <laughs> I already <laughs> have a game launcher. But yeah, you're right, other, there, should, there should be competition. Yeah. And the other thing is of course uh Persona 4 Golden shadow dropping or I guess not shadow dropping but dropping day and date yesterday on Steam. Like a shadow finally. Yep. Yeah, finally. I dude I was like this game is a PS Vita exclusive until yesterday. And it's also one of Atlas's like best games. 
And the idea that it would be like lost on such an obscure system was just like baffling to me. So I'm so glad that they finally did that. I actually bought it just literally the day and day just because I wanted Atlas to, I wanted to support this enough to show Atlas, the developer, that there's enough uh, support on Steam and PC for Persona games that just they should start porting yeah, more of them to there. Good point. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but the, honestly, if you've never played this game, this is like, this is a steal, dude. Let me tell you what I had to do to play this game. I had to buy a PS TV, which is kind of like a consoleized version of a PS Vita. And then I had to buy the PS Vita version of this game and then get a PlayStation 3 controller that was compatible with the PS TV to play it on there. So I basically bought an entire console just to play this one game. And at the time, you played Persona 4 on PlayStation 2 already. I played Persona. No, I did not play Persona 4 on PlayStation 2. I only played this version. You played Golden first. Yeah, I've never played the. There's no reason. The Golden is like the definitive version. It has everything okay. the PS2 version has, and also more. Because um, mm-hmm. that's what Atlas does. They'll release one Persona game, and then after like a year or so, they'll release like the expanded version of it. Um, that like adds like additional content, and also expands like the existing content that was already there. And that's mm-hmm. what that's what Golden was. Um, so yeah, I mean, honestly, Phil, like, <laughs> I don't know if you bought it yet, but like, this is like, this is gonna like murder your. I'm life. thinking I wasn't into it at first because I was like, I already got it for PlayStation. <laughs> no, this is this maybe, is definitely. I don't know. Maybe just give it another try on the PlayStation and like save more. Like you know, not an asshole. I would. I would honestly. So I would play. I would still get Golden. Like I would just get this version anyway because um. Golden added so many quality of life changes to the game as a whole. And also, there's also, I don't know if you're going to notice it if you start playing Golden again, but they also changed some of the voice actors that I think are m- for the better. Like, they changed really? Chie's voice actor to make her more like, kind of like a like a tomboy. And I mm-hmm. think it works way more for her character. Um, but yeah, I would seriously, I'd honestly just, i just get Golden. Because this is like, this took me 113 hours or something to like beat. And it was... I paid like 60 bucks total for the PlayStation TV and the game like combined. So I paid basically a full price game for like a hundred hours of content. It was totally worth it. And then after that, for some reason, the prices of PS TVs like skyrocketed and I don't know why, but I was lucky enough to get in before that happened. Mm-hmm. But yeah, 20 I mean, bucks if is you, a pretty fair price. if you do get this, we definitely, I would love to talk about this game because this game is uh man. There's a, uh, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack here. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all the info that we've had for this week. That's, uh, of crazy note. The PS5 reveal was pretty dope, uh, upcoming soon. So Microsoft had like previously a third party showing where they showed some games that were going to be on Xbox series X and it was, it disappointed everybody because nothing that was shown there was particularly amazing. Um, Mm -hmm. but they're saving all their first party stuff for next month i think it is in fact i wonder if i can actually look up that date uh xbox uh when is uh i don't know if i don't know when the their first party press conference thing is going to happen but it's i think it's going to happen next month so it's Microsoft's turn to uh, respond after this reveal. And uh, I am honestly, I don't know how I feel about it because uh, the only thing that's like, honestly, the only game that's interested me that I want to see more about from Xbox is Halo Infinite because they have literally shown nothing. They have only showed like CGI cutscenes or like <laughs> technically real time in engine cutscenes, whatever, but they haven't shown any gameplay. We still don't know what the game is. Like, is it a Destiny clone? Is it a Battle Royale? I don't know. They haven't shown anything. Hello, Battle Royale. Uh, so we're going to find that out, hopefully, because this game is supposed to come out in, like, four months. Uh, Wait, so, really? That soon? Yeah, it's going to be a launch game. It's going to come out this holiday. Wow. Oh, but holiday it's going to Yeah, but it's going to come out on Series X, PC, and Xbox One. And that's the thing that really sinks my expectations is because that game is going to run. That game is going to be forced to run on Xbox One. Holding it back. 
on an Xbox One. Yeah, exactly. That's like, what, like it's not going to do. The only thing next gen it could possibly do is just look really good on the higher end consoles. That's it. Like it can't do anything else because it's going to be, it's got the ball and chain that's holding it back with Xbox One. Mm-hmm. So th- yeah. that's the thing. It's like, I don't know what they can do with this series to make me kind of like interested in like the new stuff as much as I was with the old stuff. But that's the thing to look out for for next press conference. Uh, so next week. What are they saying about control? Control is making the leaps. Be, okay, I don't care. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, if you're, ever, oh, if you're ever curious about what the site is, it's sifted.net. Pretty awesome site. If you want to ever look anything up, you can just look up control. Do you know control did not sell well, but it also only cost them $30 million to make. So they, they still recouped their investment. Okay, that's cool. Is that cheap for a game? I don't really. Know. I'm not familiar with the. Uh... Not for like a triple A game. No, triple A games tend to okay. take like hundreds of millions of dollars. But okay, okay. But yeah, they did a good job with this. Uh, when is anyway. the DLC coming out? The next one. I'm glad you asked. There's a trailer somewhere. Uh, oh, I see that shit. Uh, Control's first big expansion is a throwback to the first era. Oh wait, did you play this one? The yeah, foundation. No, I, played that. I don't know. I, see, uh, uh, I already played that one. The foundation. The trailer, the one. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> there's no, another the one foundation. Out. The foundation already came out. Was there another one? No, yeah, there's another one coming out uh, late summer. I think it said. Oh, I don't know. They haven't announced that yet, so we'll see. No, they totally announced it. I mean, they haven't like released a trailer for it. I don't think. Uh, okay. So uh, anyway, uh, for you. next week. On the 19th, The Last of Us Part 2 comes out. I'm in a weird spot because I ordered it on Amazon, so I actually don't know if the game's going to get to me in time for me to play mm-hmm. it. So, I don't know. If it will, if it does, then maybe I'll do a I'll do a show. If not, I don't think we're going to have anything to talk about unless like something major happens. So we'll play it by ear until then. But anyway, this definitely went over way over 20 minutes. We're at 51 minutes so far. So <laughs> Yeah, you should have had some of this I'll speed it up. Well, it was, there was a lot of stuff to talk about. <laughs> Anyway, we can just speed up our voices by like uh, double time. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just increase the video by ten percent. We'll be fine. Can can you speed it up and then pitch shift it so it's like our voice, but it's just really fast. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I'm okay. gonna call it an episode for uh, for this uh, this uh, yet to be named podcast series. And uh, thanks for joining us, guys. I hope to see you around. You guys. Take care. Boom and slate. Nice. Do, 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 do. And wait a couple seconds. Uh, now I have to play through like the first two hours of Persona 4 again, though. <laughs>